first of all, I have to thank uh, Ashish because he just flew in from uh, Abu Dhabi at what time? 4 a.m. You got your coffee and everything? Um, uh, yeah, if my answers are slightly convoluted, it's, it's because of overdose of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, Ashish uh, said that, you know, he would like questions from the audience. So, I'm just going to take 5-10 minutes of his time and then let's make it interactive because he said otherwise... I might just doze off uh, on stage and we don't <laughs> want him to do that. But, um, you know, Ashish, first take us through G42 and Inception. Uh, so, you know, G42 is um, uh, UAE's uh, big bet when it comes to AI. You count Mubadala as an investor. But take us through their ambitions, what you've done in UAE and what you plan to do in India, because you've already built a supercomputer. I think it's the Condor Galaxy. You also have the JS, which is an Arabic LLM. And you have plans for, an, uh, for a Hindi LLM in India as well. So take, take us through those plans. First of all, good afternoon, and thank you for having <laughs> me, uh, Chandra. So uh, it's a pleasure to join uh, this group, uh, truly global AI conclave. I know when you expected someone from Middle East, it was not me. It was a <laughs> different look, but uh, just to give no, you some... but I think Malayalis have sort of taken over <laughs> the Middle East, so yeah, it's fine. I'm close to the former union minister's uh, 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 district where he just mentioned. And nevertheless, I'd like to introduce uh, G42. It's actually, I've been with the G42 ecosystem since inception. I uh, was of one of the first 10 employees there when it started off in 2018 uh, as a startup. Uh, the G42 just, I mean, it's not rocket science, it just stands for the word Group 42. Uh, we had a debate on how to name the organization, but since we were building a supercomputer and we, we were a bunch of geeks, uh, there's a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where a supercomputer was built and a question was asked on what is the answer to the universe, life and everything, and after millions of years, an answer came 42. And since we're sort of in the same space, we thought uh, to just make it more simpler, we'll just call ourselves Group 42. So back to your question. So yes, G42 is a technology holding company now. It wasn't a couple of years back. So we started off with building data centers. Uh, and I think, as the previous uh, speakers mentioned, I think it's essential you have a long-term view. And we were fortunate to be in the UAE with a with a large vision. We started off with data centers. On top of that, we built infra and GPUs. Uh, I was previously, uh, prior to 60 days back, the CEO of G42 Healthcare and the Group Chief Operating Officer of an enterprise called M42, which is the healthcare wing. Uh, we grew that organization from one employee to 20,000 employees, all leveraging AI. So similar to that, we have a number of enterprises on verticals, uh, M42 on the healthcare, We've got pre-site on uh, fintech, smart cities, space 42, and geospatial. So collectively, we are known as sort of an inter intelligence grid, we, where we sort of equate AI to electricity, where we combine these two to all together and provide power. So uh, how G42 works uh, to support our, I mean, the ambitions there, we've done similar to the previous speakers, so we focused on use cases. What are those use cases that we can make maximum impact? And I do want to touch upon, again, healthcare, because uh, uh, the previous host also mentioned drug discovery and healthcare. In, in the UAE, we've done a program called the Genome Program, where we have sequenced all the citizens there. And now using AI and tech, at a click of a button, you can identify people who are at risk, be it on breast cancer, colorectal cancer. And this is all not possible. If you don't have a data center, you don't have computing, you don't have AI models built on that, so that's the space that G42 operates. And uh, to your question specifically, yes, uh, we worked on and built uh, Arabic, the first Arabic large language model is called JACE. Our nomenclature is named after the largest mountains uh, worldwide. JACE is the largest mountain in the UAE. We also Galaxy and mountains getting inspiration <laughs> from. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and following suit, uh, when uh, the leadership of the UAE uh, visited uh, uh, India, uh, there was a MOU that was signed between the Ministry of Investment in the UAE and uh, and also with the Ministry, Ministry of Electronics and IT, uh, where G42 was nominated as the partner to execute uh, three main missions with India in partnership with local entities. One was on building digital infrastructure, built AI models, and also on supercomputing. 
we announced another mountain peak called Nanda, which was the uh, Hindi large language bilingual model. It was, it's now open source and it's available on Hugging Face. Uh, and uh, so that's in a nutshell what G42 does. Happy to take any more questions so around just that. Just to follow up on that, you yep. mentioned the MOU and I think it was a very expansive plan that you set out, right? From uh, data centers in India to uh, helping within, with a Hindi LLM. As far as execution is concerned, where is G42 in India today? What, what other plans do you have? So yeah, uh, the MOU was expansive, uh, focused predominantly on building data centers, supercomputers, AI models. Uh, we have an execution arm now in, in, in India. Uh, Manu, he was supposed to join us on stage. Uh, he's the CEO of G42 India. And their mission is to take the uh, the solutions that we have there in, in India, in, sorry, in the UAE and deploy it here in India. So absolutely we are ready and uh, the plan is in motion and you should be here more updates on that soon. Right. Um, you know, what, what do you make of where India is currently as far as AI is concerned? Uh, we have some very prominent AI uh, investors here from Axel, Peak, Lightspeed, FrameG Invest. But in terms of, you know, the groundswell that you see here, where do you see the action happening? Is it foundational layer? You have companies like Sarvam and Kritrim, or are you seeing more happening uh, at the use case level? I think it's on both cases. Now, India offers something that uh, to, uh, I, I might be biased considering my background. Uh, the, the quality of engineering talent, the entrepreneurial spirit of the sort of digital canvas and, and the, the ability to scale software, that's what India has. And I think uh, they, India will, I'm pretty confident, to uh, sort of ride the AI wave. And what G42 wants to do is, what we've done in, since 2018 is a playbook of deployment all the way for, on data centers to infra to GPUs to commercial AI solutions from different verticals of healthcare all the way to FinTech. How do we partner with companies in India and find the right use cases that can create maximum impact? And that's the mission what G42 is focused on. Do you have an investment outlay when it comes to India that you will invest, say, X amount in a year or two years or three years? So as part of inception, I don't, but G42 has partnered with another sovereign fund who is an investor in G42, it's called Mubadala and they formed an investment arm called MGX. Uh, they are in currently investing on pure AI and, and they're working across a multiple, multiple portfolios, not just on large uh, foundation model building companies, but also commercially possible use cases. So uh, whichever company that can potentially partner with the UAE ecosystem, obviously you, you stand up on, on, on the sheet for potential investment there. Right. Um, you know, in terms of the applications that you're seeing, you, you mentioned, you know, healthcare, drug discovery, it, it was discussed. Sure. But where else do you see scope, you know, for a market like India? So uh, immediately, I would say on the current use cases, some of the inception solutions that we are currently working on, we are industry agnostic. Inception is, is the new uh, uh, entity within the G42 universe, focused pure on AI native solutions. Uh, I was asked to move from the healthcare space to build this from scratch uh, and uh, our focus is predominantly fine-tuning models and building custom models as a service for any partner. We have an AI platform and I think the initial speaker along with the, uh, I think it was with Intel where they talked about an agentic AI platform. We have an AI platform that can be deployed right now on multiple corporate use cases. So I would sort of change the question on what's short term, mid term and long term. Short term, I think everyone is using AI for productivity improvement, yeah. cost optimization, efficiency improvement. We have current solutions deployed at multiple corporates in, in the UAE. It could be on just a procurement navigator of just ensuring you can find cost optimization across the procurement cycle. We have an investment uh, AI piece where to, all the way from deal sourcing to sort of come up and agnostically uh, not vote emotionally to a particular deal and come up with conclusion no, whether this is I think this, this should worry analysts working in <laughs> VC firms. No, I think it's just sort of validating uh, uh, and our portfolio has always uh, re-emphasized. AI is not, I don't think it's all about replacing jobs but augmenting 
this uh, decision making process so that's the space now inception is currently playing on on a corporate ai piece uh, whether it be for procurement investment we've got a board navigator piece which is not currently deployed in our board meetings so that's an immediate decision making process but second i think focused into the niche data centers i think we just announced a, a partnership with aiq on deploying something called an energy ai piece where we are working with the largest oil company in Abu Dhabi to, to understand their seismic data sets and coming up and with upstream downstream use cases. So that's where the role, I think, huge impact where AI can play immediately itself. Right. Um, you know, we had different points of view in the previous two sessions, right? You had uh, the former minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar uh, advocating that you know, we should have a use case based approach, uh, which is what the government of India is also doing. But you also had Heman Taneja of General Catalyst saying that you know, we must also invest uh, in the infra, in AI infra and you know, semiconductors and so on, uh, because otherwise India will lose out. You know, is there a middle path? Can we do both? It's, or is it not an either or situation? What do you make of it? I think it should be. Uh hybrid approach uh, based on the decision makers. Now, if it were me, I think I would follow the approach that I, I believe infrastructure is the key to the next digital economy. If you don't do it now, you would always be doing catch up and will be uh, dependent on another country to provide you that sort of service. That decision needs to be made now, but it's easy for me to say because the investment required in a country like India is it's, it's not straightforward. But the right approach, I guess, would be hybrid. Ensure AI is applied on the right use cases that create impact while not losing focus on the North Star that you would need a digital infrastructure connected in a distributed manner uh, that crosses regions, industries, and eventually, hopefully, globally. And that's where, actually, AI can play a true role. If it's connected globally, and especially with the size of India, I mean, the cost of inference and training would come down immediately, and you would have immediate commercial use cases there. But what role should the government play here? Because, you know, you have the UAE government's blessing, you have huge money from Mubadala, and this requires a lot of investments. So, what should, and India, I think, has an overall outlay of over 10,000 crore for its India Air mission, and it's split across different things. It's not just GPUs, there's a training angle to it, there's a skilling angle to it. What role should the government play? I think the government should play an enabling role. Uh, the UA, I can talk about on behalf of the UA government, back in 2017, or was it 2018, I'm not sure, they announced the world's first minister of AI, when at that time AI was a buzzword. And we had a ministry of AI but to set regulations on how to deploy AI across, and they had identified which were the sectors, and healthcare was nominated as the first sector where to apply. That could be a start where you start Set up a ministry of AI, another ministry? There is a ministry. When we are talking about <laughs> the U.S. cutting down I, on I divisions. can talk about UAE, uh, and hence, uh, <laughs> yes, it, it helped a lot because uh, it was sort of an incubation arm for the government to turbocharge a lot of startups in the UAE, and at that time, G42 was a startup. And I think that sort of forward vision is essential. And I, again, talking about the UAE, it was one of the first countries to actually deploy a a university of artificial intelligence, it's called MBZ UAI, and that's the reason I said let's, let's maybe suggest a hybrid model, focus on infrastructure, focus on the education, and most importantly, awareness. If we, I, I sometimes wear a sales hat and I walk into enterprises saying, why don't you apply AI, and, and immediately it's all about is, it, is this guy going to take my job? No, it's about if you don't adopt it, eventually yes. But that awareness and the education and remove the fluff from uh, all the fiction of what, what are the true use cases of AI and how can it be applied right now and how, can, how can we can invest in partnership to focus on that North Star. Right, we have I think five minutes, so sure. Ashish, very quickly, um, in terms of you know, the investment opportunities that you will look at in India, um, data centers is one yep. piece, LLM is one piece. Will you also look at co-investing with funds here? Is that something you're already doing? Uh, you know, what, what kind of pipeline do you see, deal pipeline for so G42? From G42's ecosystem, I, I do believe we are uniquely positioned because we are one of the few companies in the world that has 
data centers. It has infra, GPU, Microsoft has invested in us. We have full, full stack. Yeah, we have the full stack. So it's easy for us to uh, choose each portfolio and work on. If it's a healthcare enterprise, we have an actual hospital which is deployed right now there. If it is within FinTech and Smart City, we have, we have a geospatial and there's a company called Space42. So it's the entire ecosystem where we are currently looking for partners and our success as a startup in 2018 to in within six years to where we are is because we identified strong partners and who we took along during this journey and that's our mission in India. How do we find that uh, partner who can not only turbocharge our growth but also eventually it's mutually beneficial here. Right. Um, apart from founders, investors, technologists, we also have students in the room. What would your advice be to a 21-year-old today, 20-year-old today who's grappling with all these changes on a daily basis, weekly basis? That's a tough question. <laughs> now, I, I would say be adaptable. I think that's essential in this time and universe. You are, don't be a, an expert in one field, but be adaptable to pivot because technology is changing uh, by the second. Every day we see something new coming out. The, uh, the ability to, to adapt, when I was a student, I can't say I was not, I was just, uh, as they saw, uh, uh, the previous uh, speaker had mentioned, Jugard, there was a lot of Jugards, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, mugging happening, but I think the essential part is just uh, adapt. And in this time and world where you can actually, you know, literally plagiarize stuff and push it across, don't. Do focus on uh, what you want to be and ensure that you can adapt to learning different languages and making, uh, ins ensuring that is applied to actual use cases that creates impact. Great. On that note, thank you very much, uh, Ashish. Great thank talking you. to you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And a huge round of applause. Thank you so much again for flying in all the way this morning for our event.